Hello MCPs and welcome back to the talent management process for MCPs. Uh, we're going to continue our series with the develop phase of the TM process. And this is the phase that's all about performance management, team leader capacity building, and national education cycles. And you can even see that we've emphasized certain areas of this phase, um, with 70% of our emphasis on performance management, 20% on team leader capacity building, and 10% on national education cycles. And what this even translates to is that 90% of those activities, which is um, performance management and team leader capacity building, actually fall under the implementation of team standards. So really when we're talking about the develop phase, we're talking about making sure that team standards are delivered in our entities and making sure that an education cycle is implemented. And one thing that's super important with the develop phase, because we just finished talking about get phase where timeline is so important, is routine. Um, because when we're trying to develop individuals in our entity, there's a lot of different priorities and calendars at play. And to reach our team leaders and our members in the organization and to develop them, we have to align the activities of ourselves, our MCVPs, our LCPs, our LCVPs, and even our team leaders and our members, um, and make sure that we're able to align the activities that they're working on and the, the routine that they have in order to build development into their routine, because it's really an ongoing process throughout their member experience. And so in the develop phase, we have three areas, again, performance management, team leader capacity building, and national education cycle. Um, and this ecosystem enables learning, and so we kick things off with making sure that team leaders are conducting personal development plans with all members and collecting those plans. So making sure we know the development our members are seeking in the organization, as that's really the currency that we have to compensate them for, for the contribution they make to ISIC. Also, we're making sure that team leaders conduct performance review meetings with all members and collect those reports. You may recognize that as something from the performing team standards. Um, we also want to make sure that team leaders are having meetings to calibrate scores from performance reviews. So we actually want to have alignment um, in the way that our team leaders are giving their scores for performance reviews to make sure that everyone is on the same page and how we're assessing the members, even if they're on different teams. We also are compiling reports and producing performance review reports to the entity and to specific departments. Um, so if we're putting all this effort into collecting information and collecting data and conducting reviews, we want to actually do something valuable with it and collect, create insights and reports that we can take action based on. We want to monitor our entity's performance monthly and constantly brainstorm ways to improve entity's productivity. So this is the TM process and TM should be down there on the ground understanding what's going on so that we can suggest ways to evolve and improve entity's performance and productivity through the TM process. Next comes team leader capacity building. We know that team leaders are the ones that are leading the teams in ISIC and ISIC is a team-based organization. So first we want to assess our team leaders' competence demonstrated in their performance with their teams and gain inferences. So benchmarking where our team leaders stand currently so we can help them grow. Um, and that's why the next activity is to actually host those team leader capacity building spaces through the global learning environment based on the team standards timeline. Um, so we really can plot out the journey of a team leader. We can use global learning environments. We can create it's an education cycle in itself just for team leaders to be the very best versions of themselves as team leaders and to ensure that the results are coming from their members and the management activities are coming from the team leaders. We also have national education cycle, uh, which involves understanding our operation strategy, needs, and timeline, and identifying what are the topics that if the network received training for would impact operational results. So this is a, a great opportunity for synergy between different profiles in the MC. Um, and we want to embed the competence model into, into that education cycle. We want to assign global learning environments to each training of the education cycle. And we want to make sure that content is created accessibly to everyone in your entity through ISIC Hub. Um, so we want to make sure that the effort we're putting into building an education cycle can actually be stored in a way that makes it valuable, not just once, but over time. And so things to keep in mind when we're implementing the develop phase, when we're working to, to grow our membership for results, um, our first priority is if we're not in a recruitment peak, then the develop process is our main priority. So we know now that the get phase is very timeline bound, um, but as soon as we're not in a recruitment peak, 
develop becomes our main priority. Um, and a good case practice is actually using the onboarding phase to transition into develop. So using those last 10 days of the get phase to introduce things like personal development plans to make a more seamless transition into the develop stage. Also, as you already can guess, this 70, 20, 10% emphasis split among the three aspects of the, TM of the develop phase of the TM process helps us pretty clearly see where the priority is in the develop phase. We're putting our most significant emphasis on performance management, the second greatest emphasis on team leader capacity building, and then the third emphasis on national education cycle. And I would ask yourself if you think that this breakdown percentage-wise is, is accurate, reflect, re, accurately reflected in your entity right now. And finally, just like the get phase, all of this is not just for new members. We do not develop new members once and then leave them in the organization to, to work on their own. The develop phase is an ongoing, continuous process for every single member of the organization, regardless of the layer that they're at. Um, and that's very important to remember because this is the process that can really directly impact our operational results. Okay, and once again, we're going to ask ourselves some questions to um, kind of place our entity and where we think the current state is and identify some key next steps to take things forward. Uh, so a question you can ask yourself is, do you know how to plan your capabilities with national education cycle? So do you know how to plan um, what's needed for your entity in your national education cycle? Do you know PDP and its format? So personal development plan, and do you understand the format of the tool used for PDP in your entity? Uh, does your network have a routine of performance management? Do they know what to do day by day or week by week to make performance management happen? Do you have the system to build your team leader capacity? Is it not just an idea, but an actual process or a routine or system to make sure your team leaders know how to be team leaders? And then do you understand, does your TM understand the back office team? Um, so do you understand all the things that are going on in the design of your entity and the organization of your entity to make sure that all of those things are contributing to developing the membership? And depending on what you answered, some action items or some next steps you can take is taking the time to understand national education cycle and embed it into your MC and LC planning process. Um, national education cycles can take a lot of uh, time, energy, resources, synergy from an MC team and from an LC team. And it's really important that if it's not done purposely, then it's not going to be quality and it's not going to be effective. So make sure it's purposeful um, and embedded into your plans. And then for the other questions, uh, take the time to understand these things and make sure that they're embedded into the JD and the routine of your MCBPTM and into the plan of your MCBPTM and of your entity. And once again, timeline is super important here. A lot of the activities of the develop phase are uh, bound by either monthly frequency or quarterly frequency or even weekly frequency. Um, so this can be important for um, how you're inputting develop phase. An example for um, May to October might be that you start a PDP routine with new members, you're tracking your performing team standards, uh, you move quickly into your team leader capacity building, um, you move quickly into your calibration meetings to wrap up the quarter, um, and you move quickly into your MC term beginning, um, where all of these things have to already be in the routine and you don't want to disrupt the routine of your entity. And management routine has to come in as part of team standards. So again, what are the things that need to happen monthly? What are the things that need to happen quarterly to make sure that develop phase can happen? So if you want to give yourself time to do an activity, this exercise on making sure that your entity is ready to properly implement develop phase, you could start with defining the timeline for your implementation at least quarterly. So what are the things that need to happen in develop phase with your performance management, your team leader capacity building, and your national education cycle quarterly? Who are the key stakeholders and how do you get them on board? Um, who in your entity right now is not on board? that if they were, it would make the implementation of all of these activities more effective. Education cycle, PDP, performance management routine, team leader routine, all of those things. Um, what are the main obstacles you need to overcome? Um, in many entities, the develop phase is one of the phases of the TM process with the lowest percent implementation. So really ask yourself, why is that? Um, what are the obstacles that we're facing in our entity? 
and then make a list and make an action plan for the conversations you need to have with your MC, with your LCPs, with your LCBPs. Who do you need to talk to to make sure things can move forward? Um, and what conversations need to be facilitated by you as MCP and what conversations need to be facilitated by others, perhaps your MCPTM. And then, how do we know if the things that we're doing in the develop phase are actually impacting our membership? If they're going to stay in the organization, they're going to apply for higher roles, if they're going to be uh, stronger members. Um, and some things that you would look at is you'd look at, are they high performers? Are they achieving their goals and having behaviors aligned to the core competencies and the ISIC values? Are they satisfied with their experience? Um, satisfaction is a good indicator of performance. Are they engaged uh, with the blue code because they received the blue code? The blue code being the guide for team leaders. And are they actually still staying in ISIC and actually ready and willing to apply for higher roles? Um, so are they willing? And some of the ways that you would measure that, so these are all things as MCP that you should know where to find this information, where this data is being tracked, recorded, and analyzed. First, we would measure the percent of members that are either achieving or overachieving their goals with a special emphasis on our critical functions, um, which can be our president, finance, TM, and focused product functions. Do we have a promoter score in our member NPS? So a promoter score of 9 or 10 in NPS in our critical function in every area, or in every level. Um, and that's a question we might ask through engagement surveys. Do we have an engagement score greater than 4.25 out of 5, um, which would show that we're actually successful in team standards implementation because the engagement score is the score that our members get on how they feel they perceive team standards. And this is really important in especially our critical function at every level. And then finally, are we measuring and understanding the percent retention of members one year after recruitment? So after someone joins the organization, what percent of those members are still in the organization at the one year mark? And that's an important metric of retention. And will just measuring this make them stay and perform and develop? Of course not. Um, there are other things that matter, including incentives, um, which is why rewards and recognition will come in um, in our next conversation about the keep phase. So even develop phase doesn't work on its own. There's a lot of interaction with the other parts of the TM process. But in general, the develop phase, which is working to make this ecosystem in which our members can achieve, um, is helping us to achieve percent readiness of talent pool. So what percent of our current membership is ready to take on a higher leadership role? Um, and then what percent of our talent pool actually does take on that leadership role? So understanding both of these statistics, who's able and then who's actually willing to take on those higher leadership roles. And that's all for now with the develop phase. Um, make sure that you understand your entity's current state and where you want to be in your term um, as the develop phase can really provide the support you need in achieving your operational results as your entity. Thank you very much.